Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. It's been a while, but we're back. <laughs> and we've got some fun beers uh, to talk about today and to sample. Uh, and we're going to start with one that is a, uh, it's using the yeast that is the featured yeast of uh, our seasonal yeast from uh, uh, the sponsor of our audio show, uh, Imperial Organic Yeast, and that is L09 Que Bueno. Uh, so since it is a Mexican lager yeast, I decided to make a Mexican-inspired lager. And as you probably know, uh, Mexican-style lagers are based on German-style beers because there's a German influence in the way those beers are brewed and then you know they became the sort of standard beers of you know that that Mexican uh, style or that genre. So I put a little twist on it. I, I went afoul of the Reinheitsgebot a little bit just to get in more into the spirit of of the region. Uh, so uh, what I have here is into eight gallons or 30 liters of water at 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 C, I put six pounds or 2.7 kilograms of Pilsner malt, two pounds or 900 grams of Vienna malt, one pound or 450 grams of 10 Lovabon Munich. So far so good, right? Well, I added one pound or 450 grams of flaked maize in there. And I rested uh, at uh, uh, 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 C for 75 minutes because that's when the, uh, the refractometer reading stopped rising at that point. I collected my wort and at the beginning of a 60 minute boil I put 2 ounces or 56 grams of Czech Saz at 3.2% alpha acid again for 60 minutes. Uh, and I did a no-chill, so I put it, I transferred it into my no-chill container the next day, and I put it in my basement, which was at 59 degrees Fahrenheit, or around 14 C. The next morning, uh, I transferred it into a fermenter and pitched Imperial L09 Que Bueno, uh, the, uh, and put it into the basement, starting gravity 1051, ending gravity 1010 for an ABV of 5.4%. It fermented in the basement at 58 Fahrenheit or 14 C for like three days and at the end of that three days the yeast was done and it started to <laughs> it started to flocculate wow. out and I said whoa you know because I wanted to do a diacetyl rest so I brought it upstairs and I roused up the uh, the carboy uh, and so that you know it could make sure and have a you know a good chance to clean out all the uh, any off flavors that that may be left behind but I don't think there's a problem because uh, or there would have been a problem because as I was swirling the uh, the carboy, just clean aromas were coming out of the airlock. So I think the yeast was just done, and it flocculated out really hard. Um, so I transferred to uh, transferred it to uh, the keg. So within like you know a week and a half, I had you know fresh lager uh, in the uh, in the kegerator. So what I did was that for this I, I made a keg fill. Uh, because I was afraid that I would drink it too fast before we got a chance to uh, <laughs> to do the show. <laughs> so Steve and I both have keg fills uh, for this show. So it's a nice, uh, beautiful color. And it's got, um, I don't know, how, what would you, what would you, how would you characterize that? Uh, like a golden color? Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> Fields of, fields of gold. <laughs> it smells great. It looks great. Let's see if it tastes great. It's great. It's good beer. Oh, my. Yeah. I think it's, it's nice and, and grainy. Mm -hmm. It's nice and malty. There's yep. enough, enough bitterness there to balance it out. But there's a little touch of sweetness that I think comes from that pound of, of corn, mm -hmm. don't you think? <clears throat> yeah, I do, and it's um, I like it's got a nice a nice uh, hot backbone. It's not not flabby. Mm -hmm. I, um, um, I I appreciate that. <laughs> I've, I've had well, I I kind of am hesitant to say this, but I'm going to anyway. I've, I've been. I've been messing around buying commercial German beers, and uh, because I'm kind of into them, and I've been wanting to drink the the best I could get my hands on, 
And so uh, I bought a six pack of uh, Polliner Munich Hellas, great beer. But for me, it didn't have enough hop. It, I wanted something a little more, had a little more structure in it. It just seemed a little soft. Huh. Uh, and I would say the same thing about about the uh, about Warsteiner. It was just it's a little little soft. But then the but Bitburger, Bitburger Pills, had was exactly what I wanted in that it had a crispness and a. There, there was a firmness about the beer. I, I don't even have the I don't have the right words. That's why I make a terrible judge. But <laughs> but the but the beer kind of it had enough structure, and this one has enough structure. It it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't kind of lay there. I don't know how else to say it. Um, but I really like that about it. And you're right. I think the corn does add a little touch of sweetness. Um, this this is a dang good beer. Well, thank you. So I, I hate to ask how it how it compares. Does it fit in? I mean, it hasn't been lagered, so it's probably not as clean as you know. If no. it's certainly not as clear, yeah. but uh, you know, it's probably not as crisp and clean as if it were to sit in a cellar, you know, at close to freezing for a month or two. If it, it this isn't well to compare it, to compare it to those three beers, and actually, right now I'm kind of working my way through um, the Weinstoffener from Munich. And just just got a six pack and just kind of slowly drinking it. But to compare it to those beers, actually, it compares very closely in terms of the graininess to the um, to the Munich Hellas to the Polliner beer. Mm. Except yours is a little bit more um, a little bit has a little bit more bittering. The, the huh. bittering is a little a little more pronounced, and that and, there, and therefore I like yours better than the than the Polliner. It's not as crisp as the as the Bitburger pills. It doesn't it doesn't have quite the, the, that crispness. Maybe if you really did lager it for a, a, a long period of time and have it really clean clear out, maybe it would. I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't know enough about this about how to make those beers for real. But 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 your beer definitely definitely competes. Definitely stacks up uh, for my my impartial research. <laughs> <laughs> uh this is right the same this is right there it's a little fruitier it's it's definitely not been you know it definitely i i think it would probably clear up a little bit more it looks to me like a belgian golden right now huh it's it kind of got that yeah i can see you know, that. if you're trying to play style games but i don't really don't do that very much i i'm not really into worrying too much or whether it's you know got that but but then again, you know, if that's your if that's your bag, then then that's important. Um, it's got great lacing on it, though. Yeah, it's got great lacing. Um, it's just a, it's a really nice beer, and it really it really fits. It's definitely a German beer. It's definitely not an English bitter. It's definitely not an American pale ale. It's definitely not a, a Belgian pale ale. It, it's a German beer, and it and it's good. So congratulations. Well, thank you. And all the ingredients came from stevesbrewshop.com. That's right, they did. <laughs> and the, uh, uh, you know, in the beginning, when we started, uh, you know, brewing beer, lagers or lagering was so intimidating, you know, because there's cer certain rules that you've got to follow and you've got to ferment at certain temperatures and you've got to take care of the yeast and all this. Um, this beer was super easy, and I was lucky enough to have a basement that it was at the, was at the proper temperature, and with the pitching rate of Imperial's, you know, 200 billion cells yeah. uh, in this, you know, moderate gravity five-gallon batch, I didn't even have to make a starter. Again, they are sponsors of the audio podcast, and they sent us this yeast for free, so... <laughs> but it's darn good stuff, uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's super easy drinking, a delicious beer, uh, you know... Steve sells uh, another shameless plug. Steve is, has got some Cape Bueno, I'm sure, in stock, and, and could probably fix you up with his recipe. Uh, but uh, you know, also uh, Cape Bueno is available through the end of May as a featured right. uh, strain. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I, uh, another shameless plug. If you go onto my website, I've got a Munich Hellas that's actually modeled after Modelo Special. Oh. So if you like Modelo Special. Uh, you can pick up one of those kits. It's called High Road to Taos. And, <laughs> and, 
And, uh, but it's, it was really modeled. My earphones are stuck too far in my ears. It's really modeled after. Are they um, meeting in the center? Yeah. All I could hear was myself talking. Um, it's modeled after a Modelo special. It's a, but it's really a Munich Hellas and it uses Que Bueno and they're 25% off. So you can't beat that. So, well, there you go. You know, grab one of those kits while they're, while we still got some Que Bueno in stock. It'd be, it'd be fun. Wow. Anyway. Right. Beer one down, show one down. We got two more to do today. Peace. So. <laughs> All right. So stay tuned. Happy brewing, everybody. We'll Happy uh, brewing. talk to you later. Happy drinking. Cheers. Come and visit us online. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs and our Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. If you're in Fayetteville, Arkansas, stop by Steve's Brew Shop or find him online at stevesbrewshop.com. Man, this goes fast. That's a really, really good beer. That, it really is. That, that plays every bit in the ballpark of those commercial beers. Not kidding.